What's up, VConf? I hope you've been enjoying all the great talks so far. My name is Ian, and I'm here to talk to you today about using Storybook with Vite. We'll talk about what Storybook is, why you might want to use it, how it fits together with Vite, and I've got some exciting announcements for the upcoming 7.0 release that I think you're going to love. So why am I here talking about this today? Well, I've been a longtime Storybook user, and I chose to use Vite as the basis of our front-end tech stack at a young startup that I joined last year. Now, originally, Storybook only worked with Webpack, but I wanted to use it in V. Luckily, I found an experimental project from IRIC, which let the two work together, and I started using it and contributing to it, and now I've been helping to maintain it for the last year and a half. So before we jump in and start talking about Storybook, let's back up just a step and talk about components. Components are often the cornerstone of front-end applications and websites. We can think of them a little bit like Lego pieces because they allow us to quickly snap together pieces of UI because they have well-defined shapes and behaviors. But they come with a set of challenges as well, like coming up with the proper abstractions. Serious Lego builders have a term for pieces that can only be used in one way, spud, or single purpose useless decoration. Keeping your components organized is also a challenge. Right? Mixing all of your Lego pieces into one bin makes it a lot harder to find that 2x8 gray uh, plate that you just need to use. And finally, testing. Okay, my, my Lego metaphor is breaking down now, but testing components is hard. This is where Storybook comes in. They've been one of the big players driving component-driven development for a long time. They're currently number 55 out of the highest starred repos on GitHub. The reason it's so popular is that it helps solve those problems I just mentioned when working with components. It provides an isolated development environment for you to build your components and maybe even full pages inside of. It's a single place where your team can go and find the components that have already been built and also some guidance on how to use them. And it gives you a lot of different ways to test your components to make sure that you don't accidentally break them going forward. Let's talk a little bit about how Storybook is structured so we can understand how V fits in. This is what a typical Storybook might look like. It's a separate app from the rest of your site, and it's made up of a few pieces. In the center here is a component from your app in what we call the preview. Now, this can be either built with Webpack or Vite. And when we talk about using V in Storybook, it's this piece here that we're talking about with the code that you're actually writing. And the rest of what you see on the screen here is UI from Storybook itself. So let's see what's there. We have a list of components and variations of those components in a list on the sidebar here. And those variations are what we call stories. And they might be things like empty states or error states, or different kinds of button states like primary or secondary. There are also hundreds of community and official add-ons that can extend the functionality of Storybook. And the ones that you have installed will show up in the add-on bar down at the bottom. And finally, the toolbar at the top has helpful buttons to change the viewport or background or add outlines to the page or more. Everything here in orange is part of the Storybook UI that we call the manager. And even if you're using Vite for the preview, this is bundled at runtime using Webpack. For now. Foreshadowing. Let's take a quick look at a non-trivial example of a story. You'll see here that at the top of the file, we're importing our component from its own file. And then we export it in a default export, and this connects it to Storybook and tells it which component we're writing stories for. And then each of the named exports is a story that will show up in the sidebar. So in this case, we're taking a look at what the button looks like when it's disabled. We can make it disabled using args, and then we can also give it a, a label of what shows up in the button. We can use parameters to control add-ons. So in this case, we're showing the story in a mobile viewport. And we can use decorators to wrap the story in things like maybe context, or in this case, we're just adding a little bit of extra margin around the button. Although it can get more or less complicated, this is all it takes to make a story. Which brings us back to the three main ways that Storybook can help us out, with development, collaboration, and testing. A lot of large companies like Microsoft, Shopify, and Adobe use Storybook as their design systems. So you might think that Storybook is just a documentation tool, 
but it can be very powerful to use during development as well. Building components in isolation from the rest of your app can improve their interfaces and help you make them more flexible. I know I think a lot harder about a component's API when I'm building it out on its own rather than for a specific single use case. It helps keep me from building those Lego spuds. And sometimes we need to create components that the app just isn't ready for yet. I know when I get a design, I like to break it apart into small pieces, and I create the component and the story file at the same time. And I keep Storybook open while I'm building the component, and I add additional states like error states and empty states that the component might need as I go. And to get the component into those various states is pretty simple in, in Storybook as well. Now, for components that just take props or arguments, I can just write those into the story directly and see what the component's going to look like. And for more complicated components that might be fetching data from an API, I use Mirage.js to mock those responses. And MSW is another popular option that also has a Storybook add-on. So by changing the mocked API responses, I can see exactly how my component is going to behave without having to go through and trigger all of those states in my app manually. And of course, using Vite means you get near instant hot module reloading. Storybook is used by lots of large companies to share information about their components and their design systems. So what makes Storybook useful as a collaboration tool? Having a visual component library helps teams find existing components rather than building new ones each time. If you've ever worked on a large team or a large project, you know how easy it is to end up with three of a particular type of component just because nobody knew that one had already been built that would have met their needs. Now, you can get really fancy with documentation in Storybook using things like MDX, and for large distributed teams, that probably makes a lot of sense. But I also really like that Storybook will generate docs from the code itself. It'll find JS doc comments or TypeScript annotations, and it'll use those, which keeps the source of truth for the documentation in the code next to the component while still surfacing it for those who may not be working in the code all the time. This makes it great for collaborating with others like product managers and designers and even other engineers. When my company hired a second front-end engineer, he found it really useful to poke around in our storybook and see what components we had and how they functioned. And I also like to tag our designer in my PRs so that he can go in, open up the stories, and see if they're working the way that he designed them. I mentioned add-ons earlier, and there's over 500 of them, by the way. Some of the most popular are those which connect to design tools like Figma or Zeppelin. There's even a way to go the other direction and pull stories into Figma. Lastly, for those who want even more control over their documentation, a new portable docs experiment allows stories to be rendered into other React-based frameworks, like Rackus, for example. By the way, that top image is from the Storybook Component Encyclopedia. Dominic from the Storybook team categorized over 6,000 components from over 100 public storybooks, and it's a great way to get inspiration and see what others out there are building. Component testing is notoriously difficult for a number of reasons, but including normally you need to set up some kind of state or data to get the component into the condition that you want to test. You need to have some way to trigger user interactions to verify the component is behaving the way you want it to. And debugging failing or flaky tests is tough when all you've got is a dump of the failing DOM state printed to the terminal. Well, with Storybook, you already have the components shown in different states with mock data in your stories. And we could add a play function in our stories to specify user interactions that happen when the story loads. We'll talk more about this in just a bit. And one of the most powerful parts of testing in Storybook is being able to actually see and inspect your component that you're testing in a real browser. So now, testing components doesn't need to be so hard. Storybook supports several different kinds of tests, but today I'm just going to talk about the two kinds that I use personally and that I'm the most familiar with, and that's visual snapshot tests and interaction tests. With visual snapshot tests, pictures are taken of your stories when a PR is submitted, they're compared against an earlier accepted baseline, and differences are flagged for review. 
And this can be the easiest way to get some confidence that the changes you're making in a PR aren't accidentally breaking the styles in other parts of your app. Now, I've used page level visual regression tests in the past, and they were good, but it was always a little bit hard to tell sort of what had changed when halfway down the page, everything started turning red. And uh, with more focused, you know, component level, you know, story level tests, it's a lot easier to tell where the change actually happened. On the other hand, if you have good coverage of snapshots, and maybe you even include some pages as stories, you can make sweeping visual changes across your entire app without needing to worry about the crusty little areas like onboarding flows and error states that you always you know, kind of forget exist. An easy way to get started with snapshots is to sign up for a service like Chromatic. They're also the people who are behind most of the development work on Storybook itself. Or you can spin up your own infrastructure to do this, and there's some open source projects out there that can help you with that. Snapshots are great, but sometimes the only way to get a component into a particular state is to interact with it. If I have a form component, I might want a story showing what a validation error looks like. So I need to tap into a input, maybe type some characters, hit a submit button, and then capture the result. And this is where interaction tests really come in handy. Rather than invent a new syntax to learn, Storybook combines several popular tools into a powerful workflow. It uses testing library to target DOM elements the same way a user might find them, which not only makes them more resilient, but you might find that it also helps improve your accessibility knowledge. I know it did mine. To mock callbacks and make assertions, Storybook uses Jest Mock and Jest's excellent Expect Assertion Library. Now, these are standalone libraries that Storybook uses without installing all the rest of Jest. When you're writing the tests, you may have Storybook open so you can see exactly what's happening in the browser. But once you're done with your tests, you'll want to be sure it also runs in CI, and that's where Storybook's test runner comes in. It was created by Jan Braga, who has been building a lot of the new testing features in Storybook, and it uses Playwright to spin up one or more headless browsers and run your tests from the terminal. For now, it's using Jest to start up the tests, but they're considering swapping that out for vTest instead. And by combining together these awesome tools, Storybook makes it easy to start writing high-quality component tests. Next, let's take a look at what one of these tests actually looks like. Here's a real test from my own application that I wrote to ensure my client-side validation logic was working correctly. I wanted to be sure to show an error message if the form is submitted without an email, and that the error is connected to the input correctly for accessibility. Let's step through the code briefly so you can get a feel for what a story with a test is like. At the top is a default export, which gives Storybook some information like what to call this in the sidebar and what component the stories in this file are for. In this case, you'll see that I'm creating stories for an entire page, my login page. Storybook can also create this title automatically based on the file name and path. This named export is a story in the new simpler CSF3 format, which is just an object typed as a story. Since this page expects to get some authentication information from context, I've added a decorator here that will wrap my story with a context provider using the value I give it. In this case, I'm telling the page that we don't have a logged in user yet. Now we get to the play function. This is where your user interactions and assertions happen. First, I'm pulling a few testing library query functions from the storybook preview. Then I locate the input and button elements and save them to use later. I use testing library's user event to type a blank space into the input because I want to make sure that I treat that as an empty value too. You can see that on the right, the field is now focused and there's a space typed in. Next, I try to submit the form by clicking the submit button. We see that an error message has popped up and we could say, ah, it did what I want and, and let Chromatic take a snapshot in this state and move on. But I also want to test a few accessibility concerns, so I'll make some assertions. I want to verify that the error message is treated as an alert and that it's read off to screen readers. And I want to make sure that the error message is properly associated back to the input. Notice I'm using the to have accessible description here, which is one of the super helpful uh, matchers that are added by just DOM and is automatically included in Storybook testing. 
So now in these few lines, I not only get a thorough test of my form validation logic, but if I'm using chromatic, I get a visual snapshot in case I ever make CSS changes that break the styles here, and a story that others on the team can check out to see what it looks like when this form has validation errors. So if I've convinced you to give Storybook a try, how do you get it set up and running with Vite? Well, the package that lets you do this is called Storybook Builder Vite, and it's the one that I helped to maintain. The easiest way to get up and running in a project that isn't already using Storybook is to run npx sb init with a builder equals Vite flag to make sure that the builder, uh, the Vite builder is used. I also recommend going to the readme on the GitHub to check more information about how to set things up or to migrate over from a Webpack based storybook. And of course, feel free to open issues if you hit any problems along the way. Now for the exciting part. All of the storybook features I've talked about today work right now with the Vite Builder. But the last breaking change of storybook was two and a half years ago, and a lot has changed since then. A lot of that due to ES Build and Vite itself. Storybook has supported Vite experimentally for a year and a half, and we've learned from the issues people have had and the features that they've asked for. So let me introduce Storybook 7.0, the latest Storybook release and the first that's being built with Vite users in mind. Let's talk about some of the big changes you can expect to see. Storybook has had the concept of frameworks forever React, Vue, Svelte, etc but it turned out not to be the right level of abstraction because those frameworks also included things like Webpack config. So now renders have been broken out as only those parts dealing with rendering to the DOM and frameworks encompass the combination of renderer, builder, and configuration. This will allow us and the community to create frameworks much more easily that can be used out of the box without requiring users to override a bunch of config I've got to give a shout out to Michael Shulman and the rest of the Storybook team for the work that they put into this refactor. I think it's going to be huge. Another big change, thanks to heroic efforts from Norbert, is that Storybook is now pre-bundling its manager UI. In the past, it would install packages like Emotion and React Router that it used internally into the user's node modules, and that could conflict with versions that they already had there. Now instead, a tool called TSUP, which is powered by ES Build, is being used to pre-bundle our packages. That means that Storybook won't need to build itself each time it starts up. And if you're using one of those vite based frameworks that I talked about just a minute ago, Webpack will be nowhere to be found in your node modules. That's right, we heard you asking for this loud and clear. Speaking of node modules, I checked the install size of 6.5 and compared it to a recent 7.0 alpha version, and 7.0 was, 44% smaller. And we're still working on paring that down even further. Startup time on a new project was also about a quarter of what it was before. Up to now, Storybook has been a bit tricky to configure because you had to pull in your Vite plugins and your aliases and other config. But in Storybook 7.0, we'll read your Vite.config file and use that as a base while still giving you control over the final merged config. This means it'll be a lot easier to get up and running, and it'll help avoid subtle bugs that are caused by your app's v config differing from your storybook config. And we're still working on some other improvements that I think Vite users will really appreciate. We plan to have better PNPM support across the board. Storybook already supports Svelte native story files, but some of the storybook features like the test runner don't work so well with it. But a Storybook developer named Jeremy is spearheading improvements, and we want to make sure that Svelte developers have a top-notch experience in Storybook. Now that Storybook only supports modern browsers and Node 14 and above, we'll be able to clean up some polyfills and old dependencies. And now that frameworks are easier than ever to add, I expect that Storybook and the community will add many more over the weeks and months to come. Storybook 7 is not yet stable, and some breaking changes may still occur. If you're feeling a little brave, we'd love for you to try it out and give us feedback. If you do, be sure to check out the migration guide if you're coming from an earlier version. And on the official docs site, choose 7.0 for the version and whatever framework you're using. And of course, if you have questions or suggestions, you can find me on GitHub and both the Storybook and Vite Discord at ianvs.com.
or on Twitter at Ian Van Schoten. Thank you so much for your time, and I hope you enjoy the rest of VeepConf.